What's up, everybody? We back. Yes. What's Rick's, up, world? Rick's throwback series. Throwback series. Throwback series. The big one. The big one for us and for you too. One of the big records for us. Uh, Artist translation. Uh, I don't remember what year we did that, but somebody had to refresh my memory. So, you know, what's it called? 2002. 2002. Yeah. Long time. Ago. Oh yeah. Okay. Big record. Of course, most people remember that record. Oh, First, uh, well, which is really our biggest song, that's our smart single to date, uh, that uh, we had the most success with. Uh, Tony Mac is on that more on there. Uh, I mean, it was that was that was a, it was a fun record to make. I mean, and what people don't know, the big thing is, is that you know at first we really weren't even uh, pushing for Tony to be on the record. I mean, I wasn't. That was me. I was like, no, we don't need him on it. Because I didn't want it to make it seem like we were trying to uh, capitalize on Toby Max, uh, his pedestal, because he's always been uh, a huge artist in the industry. But he was also our friend, too. And we definitely wanted him to be a part of it. And so, I mean, it just, but it turned out. He killed it. People loved it. And, um, and then we had great, great uh, response from it. We had, I mean, to this day, it's still in rotation and still getting played. I mean, that was a breakout for us to get a lot of movie stuff. I mean, and actually, before that, we were getting movie placements anyway. Uh, but that song really, really actually is the only one that we have that actually has two movie placements. Uh, here we go, also had a movie placement. Yeah, here we go. Jack Nicholson movie, uh, Something's Got to Give. But it never hurts to have a popular white boy on the track. So I'm so taking notes on how to get successful in the game. <laughs> no, but it was organic. Ooh, I was real organic how it came together, man. A real collaborative effort. And it's, it's a good song. And we, just, we made it happen. We made it work. The other features we had on there, uh, we had uh, B3, uh, the Vincent Sisters from Atlanta, Georgia. ATL. They were all uh, running. They represented us uh, represented really well on that record. So, uh, they were uh, They were on several. Yeah, they were on several. We had Nerva. Uh, Never Door Saint at the time. Yeah, but his name is Never Ready. Never, never, never ready. Ever ready. Yeah. <laughs> never ready. Um, from Diverse City, if you know Toby Max Band, she's always been a long-standing member of them, Diverse City. So, just in case for those who don't know, this who Nerva is. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, definitely. Uh, out of Eden Girls and Be Mine. Uh, Andre. Andre Baca now. Yeah. Andre Andre Kimmy. Um, what song is Nerva? Uh, Sun, uh, sunshine. Well, I have um, oh, yes. yeah. I'm gonna edit this part. So. She's on B mine. She's on B mine. She's on. I thought she was on um, uh, Sunshine too. Right? So she's on. Oh, you had to go to the. She's on another one. Like her feature. Cause I do is on B mine too. I to do like Talking about 10, 11 years, bro. Sunny days. Sunny days. Day. Why would I think it's sunshine? We're gonna cut that day. All right, Nerva Door Saint featured on uh, Sunny Days. Sunny Days. Yeah. Antonio on um, um, on uh, Antonio Fela. Am I saying it right? Fela. Antonio Fela. <laughs> Antonio Neal. For those who don't know that term. Antonio Fela. Antonio Neal. For those who don't know. Who know his, his 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 name yeah. you know which is uh, a well-known songwriter industry insider he's done the song uh, love child on love child love child which is a very bang the real heater uh, which was produced by petty d yeah um one of one of one of the songs that we actually tracks that we got that had him you know as far as as a producer on um, and Verbs, he had verbs, uh, he did an interview, Ill Point Phrase for us, uh, Jennifer Knapp, Jennifer Knapp was on that record, on Believe. We had a lot of success with our translation from, uh, that was the most commercially used record that we had, with all the movie features for, where here we go, who are, uh, Make Room, which actually ended up 
on NBA jams, on video games, um, Tennessee boys, yeah, uh, Tennessee Titans, one of the theme songs that you yell, yeah, they definitely use that. I mean, we had a lot of success. We featured on the Las Vegas show, the, um, the part of uh, what do you call it? the series they had, yeah, on Las Vegas the series, and um, a lot of chili competition in Houston too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, these Tennessee boys to do that thing. You know, I'll be watching the. Why I'm watching the chili competition. Because yeah. secretly, the talent, though, they were very talented. Secretly, he wanted to be a chili. It wasn't too easy. Was the, the, the male version, but you know, it didn't work out. <laughs> I broke my ATL. You know, my ACL. One of them. One of them three letters I broke. Two. Um, I mean, our translation was, what, three years after we had done grammatical? So, I mean, we definitely had a lot of music to, that we, you know, built up as far as content to get back out there. Um, and that's the first record we actually let a lot of peers critique as far as before we put it out. We literally sat in a room with close friends, people whose opinions we really value, and um, just played. I mean, we literally played 20 to 25 songs. I mean, we had hardcore opinions too. These weren't, you know, people who were just kissing up to us you know, or anything. They were straight up and they were honest with what they liked and didn't like. We literally went down the line and played music and we picked based on the consensus of what people were feeling and we put it out. You know, and it was our biggest record, you know. So any artists out there that's kind of wavering back and forth on their music, let your friends check it out. Yeah, I, get, get honest opinions. You gotta have thick skin in this business. You know, ain't like everything you do, but if you can get them to like one percent of what you do, you're on the right track. So, another thing too is even on that record, we had to, we made sacrifices because there were songs that not everybody liked. I mean, there were songs that you know uh, that maybe we liked that other people did. I actually well, didn't like Ua. Yeah, and Hoffman, he wasn't feeling Ua. I don't think at that time he didn't feel like it would be like a strong enough song or for a single or whatever. I fought the label. I sat in the meeting with the label, like, I don't want this on the record. Because I was singing on the record and I knew I couldn't sing. And me hearing myself sing disgusted me. But, you know, they manipulated the vocals and they did that little Madonna thing they did you know, to make it sound like you're doing something. And, and it worked, you know, but I'm glad, you know, their opinions outweighed mine because it was the biggest song of my career and to this day, I mean, I'm still eating off of you know. Oh yeah, it was a blessing. Oh yeah, definitely. So that's why, I mean, I, I mean, we, we definitely, you, you, as an artist, you have to be, you have to put your feelings aside when it comes to when you're operating in a regular business because sometimes you may not feel something or sometimes you may be feeling something that everybody else is like, nah. And you have to be open to that, you know. Um, that's how you actually get better. You know, you have to say, you know what? Maybe I need to listen to somebody else on this or whatever. So, I mean, we're glad that we, you know, that you know we stuck to our guns and was like one cough over with the song because I mean, other than that, we wouldn't have we wouldn't have had the, the success with it that we did. And uh, definitely shouts out to uh, to our team. You know what I'm saying? DJ Form, Rick Robbins, and Al Price, our long time incorporated elements, uh, no producers, Toby Mac, who uh, who came up, and who brought the who brought the song to the table and brought it to life, you know. So I remember creating it in the studio, and Otto was playing piano. He was just playing some some keys, and then Carl just started singing to him. And then uh, and he was like, "Man, just get in there and sing it." And he's like, "Man, I don't want to sing it." He's like, "But he's like, just do it, just do it." And so. Uh, it just went from there. He took it home, took his singing home, and he did something to it, did whatever he was going to do to it, and came back, and we came back in the studio, and we was like, yes, that's the one right there. That's that's it, you know. So, but like you said, it took him some convincing to want to do the song. Uh, it took me to put my feelings aside, because I didn't, because like I said, I didn't want to put Toby on the record, because I didn't want it to feel like we were trying to use him. I just wanted it to be a song that people would appreciate for us. But um but I'm glad that I put my feelings aside and said, just do whatever, man. Let him let him do it and, and when he did it, like I say, he killed it. And it was um, I mean, look at it look at look at look at us now. You know what I'm saying? He was sitting here talking about history made in that song. So since we on that note, you know, with everything we went through in our careers, you know, uh, I think it's only proper we bring in our man, uh, Joey yes. Elwood, Key. CEO of Go T Records.